thank you very much. Um, hello, everybody. Morning, afternoon. Not quite sure where we are. Um, very warm welcome. Um, this this Save to Buy scheme, it's big news. It is, it's been very big news. I think it's two weeks since launch, is that right? Um, and I was sort of doing my research on it on the way here today. There's been 55 pieces of editorial press written about the scheme. Eight and a half million people have engaged with those, and that doesn't take any account of what's been happening on social media. So it really, that's 55 editors and journalists that have thought this is interesting. As I said, yeah, the, the Fairview scheme it is it's creative, and on on face value, when I when you and I, because uh, I'm absolutely in the same boat as all of you, read about it, you think, well, we're intrigued. We're intrigued because it looks like a win-win. Fairview get to sell their their flats. First time buyers get to buy their flats, and and move out of the trap that they're in, struggling to um to save up for a deposit, but. As intriguing it is, there must be a catch. I'm sure you all thought that, I thought that, and that's why I'm here today. When they first approached me, I said, w would I come and almost speak for you and, and, and um, interview, if not grill, um, the panel about what, it, it, what, what it's all about? I said, well, I would, because I'm, I'm interested in this, but I do want to know the detail behind it. My two requests was, one, that we would have a lawyer that we could actually talk about the conveyancing and the legal process of this. And two, that we would have somebody who is used to dealing with lenders and the financial side. Because it's all well and good, Fairview. They're in business to sell flats, great. But actually, as, as purchasers, you need the money and you need it to stack up from a legal perspective. So I'm really delighted that those requests have been met uh, and we can really get into the um, into the flesh of it. And Naveen, I think if we could just start with you, Naveen um, works for Fairview. I'm sure you guys have all read some of the press. So if just if you could just spell it out, w what is the scheme? Um, who's it for? And and I'm going to ask, what's the catch? So the Save to Buy scheme enables first-time buyers to move into their new home for up to two years at an agreed fixed monthly fee. 100% of the payments that are made go towards topping up your deposit. Um, so it's a fantastic scheme for first-time buyers that are stuck in a vicious rental cycle and that are struggling to save a deposit as well as make monthly payments. What's the um, first question is, what's the level of deposit required in order to get involved? So the first-time buyer would require a minimum of 1% deposit in order to be eligible for the scheme, and they would need to be pre-qualified by a financial advisor based on their annual income and uh, their credit score. Okay. And um, w w we shouldn't talk about it as rent, but let's say um, th th somebody's come along, they've got 1%, they've been through the credit checks, and, and, and that will, will, will come to you in a minute. Um, how do you... How is the level of rent that's not rent um, calculated? So, so the monthly payments are calculated based on the average monthly rent of the property. Mm -hmm. uh, and we would also consider the client's financial status as well. So they would know at the outset what they're looking all at? All fees would be outlined um, prior to the application being submitted. So uh, all fees will be very transparent from the beginning. Um, James? Can we come to you? Very important. On the legal side, um, which is where it's going to get interesting. So uh, <laughs> talk me through the conveyancing process. Presumably, uh, as Naveen says, you've got the deposit, you're, you're up for the scheme, you exchange contracts, and then you move in. Presumably, to get to that stage, y you and, and, and a purchaser has to go through the entire conveyancing legal process in the normal way. Yes, that's correct. So it would still be for a buyer to appoint their lawyers who would go through the title searches and inquiry due diligence in the same way as with a traditional um, purchase. It would just be an exchange of contracts. Um, instead of them moving to completion on a fixed date, it's subject to receiving the mortgage offer once the deposit has reached up to 10%. Nick, can we come to you on the, on the money side of things? Um, just talk us through the process of, of somebody getting qualified. They, they come and meet with you to start with. You, uh, yeah, you ring one of our helpline team. Um, just, just to tell us who, who you are and how, oh, how you get yeah. involved. We're, I'm from Talk24. We're the mortgage brokers and specialise in new build. 
So if someone, obviously at the moment, we can only qualify on what's available at today. So there is 95% mortgages available as we speak. And generally speaking, um, if you've got the 5% deposit, you're looking at around just below four and a half times joint sole income. So we'd qualify people on what we could do if you had a five minimum of a 5% deposit today. Obviously, the scheme has been well re recepted, um, received by lenders. Mm. Um, they're really positive. Lenders want to help first-time buyers get on the market. And obviously, this is a very unique scheme. And um, sorry, so you work for Talk24. If somebody was interested in, in, in one of Fairview schemes, they would have to be qualified by you in order to get onto that's, the scheme. That's right. Would they then... So th then they'd go and talk to their own conveyancer um, and do the conveyancing, get to exchange contracts. At that point, they move in. Yeah. They start saving up their deposit. Yeah. At the point that they've got sufficient deposit, do they have to come back to Talk24? Can they go and see their own mortgage broker no, anywhere? No, they're not, they're not tied at all, uh, Fairview, but obviously what they prefer to do is keep it all in-house. I bet they prefer yeah. it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, what we're trying to do is throughout the process would engage with you guys and give you updates on where we are and obviously try and put, talk you through the journey, as it were. Um, and, and, I mean, perhaps this is a difficult one to answer, but... Um, because we, we haven't got there, but in, in your belief right now, if we went to market right now, would a purchaser have open access to the whole range of mortgage products that a, that a buyer down the street buying, buying something else would? Yes, I believe so. You believe I, so? I believe so. With, with ni today, as today, as I say, you can do deposit unlock on 95% mortgage. I don't think they can class a deposit as anything different other than say other than the savings. It's all fully transparent, and Fairview will offer monthly more monthly statements of where you are in terms of the deposit. So just to clarify that, mm. if somebody was buying a, a flat in this development yeah. and they weren't doing save to buy, yeah, could you get them a ninety-five percent mortgage? Correct, yes. So if somebody comes with save to buy with one percent, yeah. Goes through the process, exchange contracts, move in. Yeah. If once they'd, I mean, I'm plucking figures out yeah, the sky yeah. here. But if they saved up another four percent, you'd get the mor mortgage yep. they'd complete. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's obviously we can only advise on what's available sure. as at today. But the way things are looking is, I think there'll be lots of lenders looking okay. at this scheme. N Naveen, once that, once somebody has reached that that stage of completion. Do Fairview retain any ownership or involvement in the in the property? Not at all. So the uh, purchaser would be the full homeowner. And is, is, is there any government involvement at all? No. What happens in the scenario that um, someone's life situation changes, so they've moved in, they're living there, it's their property, they've exchanged contracts on it, but their life situation changes for whatever reason, and they no longer wish to complete or no, one, no longer can complete. So effectively, they're de defaulting. What happens then? Yes, yeah, so in those circumstances, it clearly it would be important to talk to Fairview as soon as possible. But if, if they could no longer, or no longer wanted to proceed, then in terms of the deposit that's built up, um, the deposit during the period of occupation would be retained by Fairview because obviously the buyers had the has been living in the property, but the 1% deposit, um, which was paid on exchange, would be refundable to, to the buyer in those circumstances. Uh, and I think I, I sh should, just in the, in the interest of fairness, I think I should probably flip the question on its head. What happens if Fairview got into, into difficulty? They're holding for someone's money. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it is, um, the Fairview is obviously a big company. This is a small part of the business, but... In that Armageddon scenario, the, the buyer has a contract, they're, they're living in the property, they've got a contract to buy that um, to buy that property. And so in those circumstances, if, if any bank or other institution that uh, came in, stepped into the contract, they would want to complete the contract because obviously they'd want to unlock the, the purchase monies. Okay. Um, what else could go wrong? What happens if, what happens if the price went down? If somebody buys something for 250000 um, Putin blows up half the world, and it's only worth two hundred thousand. What happens then? 
So in the event that the property is downvalued, we would review our data and that of the surveyors to come to a solution in order to help the customer reach legal completion. Put that into English. <laughs> sorry, sorry, so say that again. In sorry. the unlikely event yeah. that the property will be downvalued, we will review the price um, and we would review the data from the surveyor and um, we would come to a solution with the customer in order for them to achieve completion on the property. So this is something that we could look at on a case-by-case -case basis. Nick, have you got any comment on that? Yeah, well, I would struggle to get a mortgage unless it values at the purchase price. Understood. So, so actually, even if they'd agreed 250000 you couldn't get a mortgage. There's a problem for everyone. Yeah, so I think that, as Naveen said, in the unlikely event this did happen, that Fairview would look at it because obviously I couldn't finance it unless it's valued up at the what they're paying for it. Naveen, um, how did somebody get involved? If they were interested today, how did they get involved? Um, so you can speak to one of our sales advisors in the marketing suite. They'll be on hand today to help with any inquiries that you may have. And you mentioned earlier today about it only being related to properties that actually exist. They're finished. That's correct. So the help, uh, the safe to buy properties have been selected uh, due or uh, based on plot availability. So the safe to buy properties would need to be built, complete, and ready to be uh, occupied. So therefore, uh, the scheme is only available on a limited selection number of properties. So I in essence, it will only be the properties that aren't sold off plan or during the build that enter the scheme. Is that right? That's correct. So the scheme is designed to help first time buyers move in straight away. Um. Well, there we have it. Um, I can't find a catch. <laughs> I'm not. I no catch. promise you, I'm not here to endorse this, but I can't find a catch. And it, it does seem what it says on the tin. It helps. It's a win-win situation. So um, good luck to all of you. Good luck to Fairview. Hope you can get the bloody mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, any questions? That we, we will be taking some. To to use the scheme, you can only put one percent for a deposit. Uh, what what happens if someone is able to put higher deposit and still use e even better? The more you, it's, okay. it's limited to a one percent deposit, you exchange on the one percent. But if you've yeah. got more than one percent, happy days. It will. But what happens if someone's so got? 1% or even 2% and, and they commit to it and they move in and suddenly get a pay rise, what happens? So initially you would need 1% uh, on the safe to buy scheme, so you'd need to exchange with 1%. Uh, if you do have more, we would still require an exchange with 1% only. However, if you have anything closer to a 5% deposit, then you may be eligible for the deposit unlock scheme. So th there are various different things that we can, we can offer um, depending on what sort of deposit that you have. But for the safe to buy scheme, initially we would only be taking a 1% deposit to exchange. Can I also ask, sorry, um, if somebody's involved in the scheme, they're here, they, they say they've agreed a, a 12 month period during which time they, they're gonna save up for the deposit. What happens if their income or ability to service that either goes up or down, is that flexible? Um, so the purchaser has the option to um, make more payments, more monthly payments. So we can increase those monthly payments in order to get you to, uh, into your home and complete it a lot quicker. Um, but initially, I think um, if, if the income is reduced, then we would look at each case um, you know, on a case-to-case -case basis. So that's a yes. <laughs> we will review each case, yes. So that's a no. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. We'll review case by case. Um, well any I've other questions? Question, if I may. Is it possible to use any funds that you currently have in a lifetime ISA as part of this initiative? Nick? I'm a mortgage broker as opposed to a financial <laughs> advisor. But as long as you can get the funds out in time... I mean, obviously, you've got exchange with 1%. As long as you can get the funds out in time for the completion, then that's fine. It's just an investment. Like you can use... Um, the funds can come from um, bank of mum and dad, um, savings, investments. As long as it's transparent, that's fine. And if it is bank of mum and dad, for instance, um, do do the lenders at the moment look at that and go, well, that's that's not that's not from earned income. Can you service this debt? No, the, the bank of mum and dad. What I mean is a gift, as opposed to sort of lending it to okay. them. 
if it was lent on a basis that there's a monthly payment, then that will be taken out of your affordability. If I understand correctly, um, the monthly payment consists of a set fee to Fairview, and on top of that, there's money to pay into as a deposit. Or is the total amount that you pay every month the deposit? And at the end of it, after 12 months, if you decide not to go ahead with the purchase, you were saying that you only get your 1% back. So if you've paid the other 4% already, you will have lost it then? Is that so right? I'll answer a part of that question. Um, we would only take 1% from you at a point of exchange. Um, and then the monthly payments are then used to top up your deposit. That's all of it? Correct. Uh, yes, the entire amount of that monthly payment is deposit top up. Right. Yes. After 12 months, if you say, I can't go ahead with the purchase, yes. you then, say for example, after 12 months you've paid the other 4%, so you've got your 5%. Yes. Um, so you will retain that, those 4% and just return it on. That, that's right, on the basis that the buyers had the benefit of the occupation during that period. Yes. Thanks. Um, realistically, how much do you need to be earning? I'll answer that question. <laughs> it's a, as I say, it's around four point... If you, it depends what deposit you've got, obviously. But if you're looking for a 95% mortgage today, you're looking at about 4.49 times sole or joint. Put, put that into layman's language. Put it into layman's language. If you were looking to buy a, a plot, the one bed, um, at 327, I believe. That's yeah, correct. correct. You'd be on, if you didn't have any debt, you'd be looking at an income of about 69,000. In, in order to come up with, so one bed, 320. 327. 327,000. Um, sorry, just talk us through that again. So basically, Obviously, if you're going to use the deposit unlock scheme, yeah. which is the 95%, yeah. um, they lend 4.49 times joint or sole as a maximum. Okay. So on a one bed, 95% is around, around 69,000. That's obviously if you didn't have any car loans or credit cards or things like that. And it must, but you must have a, I must stress this, it's got to be a clean credit score as well. Joint or sole. Um, could you do like, um, say you pay the 1% and then like let's say, could you agree to a two year if you come up to a 9% extra deposit instead of 5%? So like to reach a 10% deposit? Yeah, that, as long as that it gets signed off by Fairview that you were doing the full two years, then effectively, yes, as long as you have the deposit saved. So if you were paying obviously two Two thousand pounds a month, you'd be saving twenty-four. That's forty-eight grand to put down in two years' time. I think we probably have I missed anything. I'm happy. I should just say that because you know when I first read it, I thought, yeah, that's oh, it kind of looks interesting, but it is it is about the mechanics of it that are vital. It does genuinely seem to work, and I and I do believe it will be copied. Thank you.